We're here today because of water. We're in a drought, we know that. And, and John was just telling me the, uh, the history of this. Uh, the windmill's been here for a long time. The Pila has been here for a long time. But this little impoundment, this little divot, this little dig out has only been here a couple of days. He wanted to put water on the ground because it wasn't doing a whole lot of good in that concrete Pila. So he simply just had the overflow. You see the pipe going to the top of the Pila or the concrete tank. So all as the windmill pumps, it fills up the Pila, the overflow that, you know, otherwise would just go, go out on the ground for evaporation. He pipes it in here. He dug this small hole. Doesn't, you know, doesn't take a lot of equipment, doesn't take a lot of engineering to dig a hole just like this because wildlife doesn't need a lake. They don't need a two acre pond or a, a place to go jet skiing. They just need a puddle of water. They'll drink out of a cow hoof print. They just need enough water to get their lips in, maybe to walk out in there and cool their belly when it's 104 degrees. They just need a little place and this is perfect. So he has a constant wind supply to pump the water and you see it just constantly coming out of the pipe. So this thing, it, it's soaking in the ground. You see the mud ring around it. You see the animals walking in the mud. You'll see some small animals lay their belly in the mud to cool themselves. Thermoregulation when it's 104 degrees is critical and we're fixing to experience that in another hour when it gets real hot. You know, we're gonna wanna thermoregulate our own self. But right now the wind's blowing and it's pretty pretty pleasant out here. So this is an air conditioner for your wildlife other than just an obvious water supply. So the water's gonna be sinking, the water's gonna be evaporating, the water may run into the brush. Perfect. But the, another good reason that this is here, he, clear, he cleared this opening here. And most wildlife, remember we were talking about stress and predator prey and, and Serengeti Plains. If this was all brush all the way around us and you were a little fawn deer, would you come out here and drink in the broad daylight once or twice and then you'd get killed? So, so no, you wouldn't eventually, you know, or mama would get killed. So because there could be a coyote over there or a mountain lion over there or a horned owl up there. So he cleared this area. Cover is not very far away, 20 yards away. That's two hops, three hops for a deer or a flush of a, a flap of a wing for a quail and you're in the brush. So, so escape cover, safety is very, very nearby, but right here I can see all the way around me. So I can sit here and get a drink. I can put my head down and look around. And by the time I do that, you can't sneak up behind me. Nothing can sneak up behind me while I'm drinking down here and, and getting, getting bushwhacked from behind. So you, you clear it out for visibility. That lowers the stress. So now that animal can sit here and drink as much as it wants. It can just blow its belly up with water. That's important when it's 104 degrees because if it was surrounded by brush and it's a very stressful environment, you just take a drink and step back. Well, you didn't get enough drink. You may get dehydrated. Maybe a predator shows up and you have to run. Well, you're thirsty again. So by allowing the animal to come here safely and calmly and look around and say, okay, I'm okay, and drink, he can drink as much as he wants. So he only has to come drink maybe once a day and not four or five times a day. If he has to drink four or five times a day, he's on his feet, he's walking, he's traveling, he's exposing himself to predation. He's exposing himself to danger if he has to be more mobile. So come out here one time a day, early morning, evening, whatever, and drink all you want and be done for the day and go over and lay down. Rest, cool off, pant. But don't be walking around, it's 104 degrees and you're big and pregnant or you're growing a big rack. You don't want to be walking around when it's 104 degrees. Drink all you want, all you need and go over there and lay down. So this is a textbook operation. Now that was deer. What about dove? What about turkey? The exact same reason. Dove are like a big bombing airplane. Big old, not a jet fighter, but a big fat bombing airplane. They'll come in, they'll circle, they're looking for predators, they're looking for a place to land, and they see this bare dirt right here. And they're not gonna land in the tall grass because there's snakes and fox and bobcats and stickers and, and, and a dove is a big breasted, big chested, fat, heavy bird, and it lands pretty, pretty aggressively. So it wants to land on soft grass, I mean soft dirt, to where it can see and look around and then it walks to the water it doesn't fly into the water like a duck it lands on the dirt 
and walks 10 or 15 feet in, you know, gets a drink and then comes back out so we can see around. So this is a great dove hole. That windmill is going to attract dove because dove are smart enough to understand they see a windmill, it's water. So they're going to attract them from, you know, that thing's 40 foot tall. So a dove anywhere within two miles is going to see a windmill. He's going to fly towards it. He's going to see this big wide open and he's going to know there's no predators out there because I can see them. He's going to circle around. He's going to see the bare dirt and he's going to say, bingo, I've got a great landing pad. So he's going to come in and land his big butt right here in the dirt. He's going to walk and get a drink. And if you're a dove hunter, these shades of trees, they're perfect 20 gauge range from the water hole. So you don't have to sit right here and hunt dove because the dove's going to land right there. Get over there in the shade. Don't be a fool. Get in the shade. Hide under the windmill and shoot the dove as they come in. So it helps the dove. It helps the dove hunter. Dove are migratory. They're not stuck into this high fence ranch like the deer are. So we can, we can attract the dove and harvest the dove with and stay within your legal means and bag limit and, and, and not overdo the population. So this is good for the wildlife, it's good for the hunter. So everybody, everybody, everybody good with that? Turkeys, the same reason. Turkeys like to walk everywhere they go. They hate to fly. They're big, they're overweight, they have you know, eel-shaped wings. They don't like to fly. They like to walk. So a turkey's eyes, his defense is his eyesight. So he walks out into this big open, he looks around, he's like, cool, looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go get a drink. And he'll come out here and get a drink. Now, turkey require grass. Unlike the dove, turkey require grass. So he wants to come out here, get a drink, and then go chase grasshoppers and bugs and crickets and snails in this open area because he can see, he can watch for predators, but feed in this open grass savanna area. So this is turkey heaven as well. Now if a coyote or somebody shows up that's bad news, take to the wing and get out of here and get in the brush or get up on these tall trees. You see there's oak trees everywhere around so a turkey can just jet up to that tree this is the perfect environment. So you got food, water, and you got cover here by being proximity. Cover is right here because it's only 20 yards away. And so you got to think like a quail that's six ounces tall, six inch, six ounces and six inches tall. He can only flush three or four wing flaps and go 30 yards. You know, they, they flush, they glide, and they, they land. That's 30 yards. That's it. So we're 20 yards from the water. Perfect. So he doesn't have to flush, run, hit the ground, flush. Again, that's too energetically expensive. And if I'm a bobcat, I can catch him on that second jump. But if he flushes and glides and, and lands in the brush, I can't catch him. So this is perfect for, for quail, perfect for, for turkey, perfect for dove, perfect for deer.